Hi, I'm Kevin Hauser. This is the uh, video number seven in our series that we're doing, or that I'm doing in support of my new uh, book. So what I want to do for this particular video, which won't be too overly long, I want to go into the Unify controller and look at some of the settings and look at some of the features that a lot of people aren't really sure of or understand what they do. And then we can get a better idea of should we actually deploy those features or should we leave them alone? And maybe in which case should we deploy those features? So this is more of a little compilation of questions that I've get, gotten from students over the years, basically saying, hey, what does this thing do? Should I click this? I oftentimes will go through these buttons one at a time to show or to explain what they do. And then the user, of course, depending on what kind of network they have, may, may want to employ these uh, or not or not use them. So I think a better idea is just having a, a good understanding of what some of these settings actually do. All right, so we'll just jump into the controller and we'll give you a little explanation about what these uh, settings actually are. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I've opened up my controller. And the first place I'm actually going to go is into my wireless network um, location. And I'll just edit my own wireless network so we can look at some of these strange settings, some of these unusual settings. I want to scroll down a little bit and we can actually see some of them here. All right, so let's look at the uh, the, the one, one that I want to start with at the bottom is this under the rate and beacon controls, you'll see this setting that says DTIM mode. And there's the checkbox use default values. So let me deselect that. And by default, these are set to actually set to, to one. So the first thing we should understand is what the heck is, is DTIM. Well, this actually stands for um, Delivery Traffic Indication Map. And what this is allowing us to do is set set some numbers here or set some, some qualifications for devices that um, may want to wake up or, or sleep a little bit longer before they have to actually are going to check to see if there's something ready for them to pull down off the AP. If we consider that every time an, an access point sends out the beacon, when he broadcasts his beacon, when you have this DTIM mode set to 1, this means that after every beacon interval, right, after every single beacon interval, the clients would be expected to wake up and actually see if there was any broadcast or multicast data ready for them. So in, in a DTIM value of one, after every single beacon, right, the client is actually going to check to see is there something for us. So consider the beacon interval is 100 milliseconds. That's 10 every seconds. If I set this to two, if I set this value to two, then the device can allow two beacon intervals to go by before checking to see if broadcast or multicast data is ready to be pulled down off that AP. Now, there are different values for different vendors. Uh, iOS, Apple iOS says a, a good setting would be three for their devices. However, it, like I said, if you set this, um, remember that certain devices rely on multicast and broadcast to happen quite frequently. If you set this number too high, I can pretty much guarantee that your VOIP, voice over IP phones will actually have a problem maintaining a connection and, and actually pulling that information down in a timely way. But that's what DTIM actually is. It's a uh, <laughs> delivery indication map that basically says, I'm gonna allow you to sleep through this many beacon intervals before you're gonna to check to see if there's actually traffic meant for you. So this is the idea is to allow devices to save a little bit of battery life before checking to see if if there's actually any traffic for, for that device. So that's what that actually is, which is, I mentioned I was gonna come back here before when we looked at the data rate control features and sure enough, that's kind of what we did. So if we go up a little bit, there's 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 a couple others in this um, particular window or a particular uh, utility that I want to show everybody, to, so so we have an idea of what's going on here, so we have a better idea of what some of these things actually mean. So let's let's look at um, let's look at a few here. So let me let me start by making you not dizzy. So right underneath user group, um, we have UAPSD unscheduled automatic power save delivery. 
All right, so UAPSD is basically WMM. It's a quality of service standard that will, again, allow a device to sleep longer before it actually has to check to see if there's actually traffic meant for that device. So this is a quality of service that actually will do traffic shaping from the AP side. That's kind of what this does. You'll see it's not enabled by default. And again, depending on your network, you may or may not want to actually have this set. Um, so again, you can see it's not set by default, but that's what this actually is. So, so you can actually Google WMM or UAPS, uh, UAPSD, and you can actually see what that's kind of what this is for. So that's, that's the idea behind this. So right underneath that, uh, you can see wireless LAN schedule. We're going to kind of skip that. We we that's just to, so you can set up a schedule on how often your wireless LAN is going to be available or, how, or when it's actually available. So right underneath that, let's look at multicast enhancement. Enable multicast enhancement IGMP version three. Okay, so the protocol IGMP is the protocol that manages the overhead for multicasting. So the idea here is that uh, what a switch could actually learn is what what access devices or what client devices are actually participating in a multicast. So it can actually eventually prune multicast from ports that really do not require it. However, this would require some additional services. This is why it's not set by default. So this is the idea that, that some devices don't need multicasting if they're not you know involved in a multicast group they don't need this traffic to come down on their port so this gives you that granular ability to actually prune that off but again in some systems you would need another another service running to actually keep track of who was in a multicast environment especially if you had voice phones that were roaming from one ssid to another from run one access point to another if you had this you know, incorrectly dis enabled on one AP and disabled on another, this can cause the call to be actually dropped. So that's, again, this is something that you're going to have to spend time. Do I want to deploy this? And you can see by default, the answer is no, you do not want to deploy it by default. Uh, high performance devices, again, that's pretty self-explanatory. That allows clients to connect to a 5G radio only. All right, so here's a, a fun one. Uh, Beacon Country. It says add 802.11d country roaming enhancements. <laughs> what this allows the SSID or the, the AP to do is broadcast out its country code information. So devices that are connecting to it can then you know apply those standards uh, in that particular environment. So imagine you've gone to a foreign country, let's say uh, Canada, you've jumped over the border into into, into Vancouver or Toronto, and your phone is no longer on your local provider. You can see your phone will actually pick up another service provider. This is similar to what Beacon Country is doing, where you don't have to adjust your client device to allow them to participate in a wireless network. So a client from another country, say Canada, could actually participate, you know, in your AP environment without having to change any settings on its local, on the local station. That's what this Beacon Country actually does. Kind of kind of strange because the way they worded it, but that's actually what it does. Now, here's another one I, uh, underneath it called BSS Trans Transition, and this is actually selected. So what this is supposed to do is that once a client or a station starts getting a very weak signal, instead of a, a deauthentication packet, the client will be sent a transition packet to say, we'd like you to transition to another SSID in our broadcast service set. That's kind of what this is telling the client to do. So when a device has a weak signal, the UAP sends out what's called a roaming BSS transition frame. And this would help some clients transition to another, um, to another access point. That's what this is actually for. So that's actually kind of interesting. All right, so let's keep going. All right, excuse me, I had a coughing fit and had to stop the video for a second. <laughs> so continuing on down the list, we have proxy ARP. And this is also not selected by default. It says remaps ARP table for a station. This actually does a lot of benefit. Now, I mentioned before that 
when there is a station that's doing any kind of broadcasting, it will actually suck up a lot of airtime. So what this does, this allows the AP to be the proxy for him when there is an ARP request. So the idea is that instead of a broadcast frame, this actually goes out as a unicast frame. So again, this would stop the station from interfering with other devices' airtime. Is this? I, I think that this is a excellent choice to set this. Um, like I said, I don't think this will cause any problems whatsoever. I would definitely enable this. Now, the one underneath it, layer two isolation. So we talked briefly about isolation when it came to port isolation on a switch. Well, this is kind of similar to that. Well, this is a uh, isolating stations. And you can see that it is not enabled by default. But imagine that you're setting Unify up for a hotel. If you didn't isolate stations, if you didn't select this checkbox, then the guy in room one could actually discover other clients in room two or room 10 or something. He, he could actually end up seeing other people at that layer two level. By selecting this checkbox, the, the stations will never be able to discover anybody else on layer two. So again, you can see this is why this is not set by default because in normal networks, you do want them to discover other devices like printers and other devices locally to them. But that's kind of what this actually does. So this is important to understand what this does. We t like I said before, we talked about isolating ports. This is isolating a station. It's nice because in previous versions of Unify, in older versions of Unify, this was not selectable in this fashion. So I'm, I'm glad they actually have it selectable in this fashion. It makes it a lot easier to, to deal with. Now, underneath that, um, we have legacy support, which don't check that unless you want to support older wireless devices. And underneath that, we have PMF. Okay, so you can see that there's three options here, disable, optional, and required. So what is it actually doing? So PMF, basically, if you set this to optional, what happens is when a client and a, uh, when a station and an access point do the entire uh, beacon probe handshake um, probe acknowledgement routine then the the access point and the the station actually will remember who who each other is this would prevent so what what they do is they actually have special hidden characters inside like the mac address of, of these devices so this would prevent other stations from spoofing the mac address of a particular station and sending disassociation frames either based on the access point or based on the station. This would prevent people from trying to, you know, hack into your wireless network. Now, the difference between optional and required would be that the, the, the station would, if you select required, would have to understand how this works for this to function. Whereas in the optional, obviously, if the station is capable of running PMF, it will, it will go ahead and do that. So what I would always select this to, to optional to allow stations that can that can perform PMF uh, to join my wireless LAN. So that's that's what PMF actually is. It's a way to keep um, stations from being attacked. And you notice at the bottom it says uh, PMF applies to Gen 3 Unify APs only. So obviously you have to keep that in the back of your mind as well. All right, so let's move on to a couple other settings. <clears throat> Okay, well, this is the last little bit. A couple more things I want to show you. Um, for this, we've I've gone into the network location of Unify, and I'm going to go into the LAN side. I'm going to go ahead and edit that so we can actually open it up and look at it. So an, another commonly asked uh, question is, what is this IGMP snooping selection here? All right, so when you have a home network and you are supporting devices that do streaming, like IPTV, whatever type it actually is, what IGMP snooping is actually performing, it's actually looking at what switch port is actually using streaming services, and it's enhancing that by not having other ports involved in this. That's the entire, that's the entire nature of IGMP snooping. So if you have a device that's trying to support IPTV, or you have a switch that's supporting this, by turning this on, it basically tells the switch, hey, if you're seeing streaming traffic on this, uh, then we don't need to advertise it on another port that's actually not doing that. So again, this is something you want to look up on Wikipedia, find out what IGMP snooping is, 
And again, this would not hurt your network by selecting this and letting it run. Again, uh, snooping is basically the, uh, the the software looking at the switch port itself to see do we have multicast or streaming traffic that we need on that port. At the very bottom here, um, we have one more thing that I want to talk about, which is DACP guarding. So there's a checkbox here that says enable DACP guarding. And what this does, this, this by the way, wasn't selected by default. I've actually made this um, feature. I've enabled this feature. What this would do, this would prevent rogue DACP servers from existing on your network by specifying which trusted DACP server you're actually using. So this is a more simplified way to say, here's how I'm going to set up, you know, trust a DCP server. But that's what DCP Guardian actually is. It's the ability for you to put in what DCP server you actually want to run. And you can see that I, I have a, the 1.1, which is a router that I have running DCP on my network currently. So those are some of the, the, the strange, unusual checkboxes and uh, selections that I just wanted to cover. All right, let's go back. All right, well, that wraps that part up. Um, in the future, we're going to do another video on unusual settings on the uh, Air OS, on the outdoor radio. So I hope that uh, you learned something, and uh, thanks very much for watching. See you soon.